I identify as a good father. That's why I do the things that make me a good father. I identify as a good husband. Do I screw up? Of course I do. But I do the things that make me a good husband because I identify from day one as a good husband. So until you sit there and say, you know what? I'm a rapper. Mm. I don't have a contract yet. I'm a rapper. Mm. Right? I'm a lawyer. I'm 14 years old. I'm going into high school. I'm already a lawyer. Right? Mm. Do the things, act the way that you want to be. Be it now. And then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. Welcome to the DNA of greatness. Now, today we'll be talking about a very specific subject, a specific subject that I believe relates to just about every single one of us on this journey of life, whether you're somebody who is already aspiring towards greatness or somebody who feels it irking within you. And that subject is, are some of us just born average? Now, I am your host or co-host Aquarius Wave, and this is the man of the hour, the Tower of Power, Coach Bobby Blueford. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Coach Bobby. Uh, those who know me, know me. Those who don't, uh, I am a football player, college football player, turned chief financial officer, turned fitness guru, expert, thought leader on social mm -hmm. media, turned motivational speaker, and wait for it, greatness coach. Why that greatness point. coach? Well... Some call it life coaching. Some call it um, life planning. I prefer greatness because I try my best. It's my job, my purpose on earth to extrapolate uh, the DNA of greatness out of everybody I touch. So rather than confine myself to one area, as in life coaching, I seek to help all, all people in the pursuit and the unraveling, uncovering of the DNA that, that I'll get into of greatness. See, I'm telling you folks, this is the reason why we're doing what we're doing. What you got right there was just the introduction to this man. <laughs> just imagine what you're about to get in the next That's hour right. That's right. of absolute life-changing, transformative content. So that being said, let's get into our subject, which is, are some of us just born to be average? And I know this is something that you have talked about throughout the years, Coach, right? And by the way, Coach Bobby is not just a coach to the students or the athletes, not just a coach to the parents, but a coach to everybody, right? And that's something I witnessed from the very beginning of you know our relationship is you have been somebody who can speak into anybody's life and you've also been somebody who can see things in other people that they most of the time cannot see within themselves. And so that being said, I really want to ask you as a segue into uh, our episode today is, are some people just born to be average? Like, is greatness for everybody, or is it like designated people who are born to be great? We want to believe that we're born to be a certain way, mm. right? Because those who have not achieved uh, what they dream about, what they hope to be, uh, it's easier to rest on your laurels or sit in self-pity and say that he or she was born that way. Because in many ways, it lets you off the hook. That is not the case, right? And, I, and I'll frame it oh. I'll frame it in three ways. Mm. Um, one of my gifts, I believe, is my ability to create parallels, analogies, stories that frame things differently for people mm. and give them aha moments or make them think, oh, that makes sense. Mm. That's what I try to do. Um, so what I say, I hope, doesn't come across as preaching, but comes across as teaching and helping people to realize what, realize their answer in their own way, in their own mind through what I tell them. So I'll frame this three ways that I've used in the past. Number one, people, people are, people I speak to um, about this very topic, about, about staying complacent. Now, average Average is up to, you know, their viewers' perception, right? What's average to me might not be average to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But whatever your version of average is, it's a complacency. It's, it's a staying where you're at. It's a staying here, not trying to, to figure out if I can go one step further in my life. That's what I call average. It's not trying to figure out if there's better in me, right? A better football player, a better husband, 
um, a better financial advisor, a better CEO, a better mother, whatever it is. It's the complacency to accept where you are that makes you average. So nobody is meant to be that. Mm. And I always say to people who, who have a spiritual or religious background, this is the first tenet or the first framework. I say, we read about how we're all gifted. We're all God's children. Right. You know, yeah. God created us all to be, to be beautiful. And so I, I ask people bluntly often, do you believe that to be true? Whatever your God is, whatever your spirituality is, do you believe that people uh, are born with a with an innate ability to, to be special, to be unique? Mm. I believe that to be true. Many people I talk to who go to church, who have a religion, they believe that as well. Absolutely. And I ask them, well, you either believe one of two things or one of two things is present in your life. Mm. Either you believe that to be the case, but for whatever reason, he skipped you. Right? Uh -oh. Every other person in the world is uniquely gifted, including your children, by the way, right. who you tell that to. Yeah. So we all who have children, we tell our children that you're gifted, you're special. Yet, for some reason, we project to them that, oh, but except for me. Yeah. Right. I'm meant to be in a nine to five. I'm meant to complain about my weight. I'm meant to complain about me having a boss I don't like. I'm meant to complain about this or that. Right. But we tell our kids and then we go to church and, and, and pretend to believe that God created us all to be great in his likeness. Right. Except for me. Except for me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or and this is what hits them. Mm. Or you believe that to be the case. But you say F you. Now, I didn't okay, which one yet. is worse? Which one is worse? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> because, I let okay. Decide. okay, so I want to jump in real quick because this was a discussion I was having with myself, as we often do, right? Yep. I was having a discussion with myself and I was, you know, taking my little walk around and the area that I live in is filled with nature, filled with trees, you know, there's the butterflies and the bumblebees and all that having yep. a good time. And I was looking at everything around me and I was like, you know what? Our creator has created everything with its designed purpose within it. Everything in the entire ecosystem, every bug that we don't like, you know, every little critter that annoys us, all of them have a specific purpose. Even right. that uh, that huge mosquito-looking creature that flies around and eats the mosquitoes that you don't right. like, right. that thing is serving a purpose that is actually benefiting you in right. the short term, long term. So I'm looking around me and I'm thinking to myself, wow, every single aspect of what I see and do not see serves a purpose. And yet for a majority of my life, I questioned whether I had a purpose or not. Right. Right. So that just right. ties directly into what you're saying, which is we have to inherently have this belief on one side that I'm just the only being in this entire known and unknown universe that has no purpose. Right. And I like making it blunt. Yeah. I mean, I like I like having that hard conversation with myself mm -hmm. and with others, and forcing and forcing others to have that conversation with themselves. Like, yeah. what is there another choice of the matter? I mean, you tell me. Is there a third I option? There's not a th either you believe that we're all created to be great, except yeah. for you, or that there are no there are no exceptions. Yet you choose to tell whatever you believe in God, you know, Buddha, whatever. You choose to tell your all being that I'm not going to take part in what you gave me and and give it the big F you, right? And I hate, I hate doing that, but that's what you're, you're doing that. Like if, you're, yeah. if, you're, if your child told you that I wasn't going to use all these tools you gave me, how would you feel towards your child? Not much different than the, the Lord you think is, we believe or you believe is overseeing everything and has placed you on this earth and with yeah. all these abilities and tools and you choose to do the same thing. That's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, so it makes you question. So that, that's the one framework. Mm -hmm. um, should I go on to the other two? Please. Come right. on now. That's so the second one, so that's the religious framework. Yeah. The second one is it comes down to um, genealogy uh -oh. and it comes down to lineage. Uh, and it comes down to um, DNA, basically generation, <laughs> right? It's, D it's DNA. A DNA. Yeah. So if you are in America, mm. right. And I, I, I would love to use it for, for the whole world, but it's just an easier concept with Americans, right? If you are in America and you are not native American, mm. 
right? And if you are, I'll address that as well. But if you are not Native American, your grandparents, maybe, mm -hmm. for sure, your great grandparents mm -hmm. came here with nothing. And for sure, your great, great, great grandparents came here possibly forcibly yeah. with nothing. Yeah. So just like, you know, I'll go scientific, right? Survival of the fittest, uh -huh. right? Our, our survival DNA, the genes we have are stronger, quicker, faster, better able to adapt to our environment than our great, great, great grandparents. Talk that is that. not up for debate. Absolutely. Because the, 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 the fittest of the fit brain and body figured out how to survive. Yeah. We and then pass, pass on, our, 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 and then pass pass on that yep. DNA yep. to the next generation. Absolutely. So how can you tell me that your great, great, great grandfather who was a slave or your grandfather who invented the, the light bulb or your grandmother who invented 40 hour work weeks, whatever it is. So all these people that you come from that have, and all of us have somebody Absolutely. or some bodies that have done some great things, even if it was just surviving. Exactly. I was about to say running from that saber tooth that we exactly. always talk about, right? And that so you're telling me that yeah. you come from that. Yeah. And all of a sudden you, your part of the pie is average. <laughs> Uh oh, your slice of the atom of the of, of the DNA pool is average. How is that possible? Wow, it's not possible. And if it's possible, it's very, very, very unlikely. Yeah. So they say that the odds of you just being here are seventy trillion to one. Thank you. Right. Like Thank we you. like to talk about, you know, the sperm cells, et cetera, and how mm -hmm. you know you're one of millions, but you don't also factor in the multitudes of reasons you could not be here. Right. right. Exactly. Like, let alone how many times that, it may have taken for your parents, et cetera. Everything right, in right. between could have caused you not to be in existence. And yet you right. are here and you're the one who's telling yourself, oh, I just happen to not have a purpose. Right. Exactly. Wow. And, 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 the, and the, what's the opposite of desire? The undesire. <laughs> the <Apathy>. undesired, <laughs> the apathy. The apathy to compete in life runs contrary to who we are. Hmm. I don't mean compete against everybody else. I want to beat yeah. you. I want to beat you. I mean the 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 apathy to be competitive in terms of what can I do today Ooh. that makes me better. Ooh, that that right. had to be inside of us to survive hundreds of years ago. That had to be in, every day. You had to figure out how to be better, or you want to survive. Yeah. You wouldn't survive. How do I find a better way to get my food? How do I find a better way to build a fire? Find a better way to, to take care of my children, to feed my kids, to go to sleep. To, everything we did to this point was built upon waking up with a competitive spirit about That's getting better. That's a great point. That's a great. You need a sharper spirit of more than you That's what I'm today. saying. Absolutely. And, and only through convenience yeah. have we been able to let that competitive spirit die. Okay, so then I got a question about convenience because convenience seems to be a natural byproduct of a society that's doing better, right? Yep. So the yep. only reason I have a store down the street is because my ancestors at some point said it's far too difficult to get food in this way and for us yep. to survive in the long term, right? Yep. So then what do you think is the balance? Because we are living in an age of convenience. We're living in an age of the stores down the street. Then... Is there still space for greatness in that? And what does greatness then look like in this age? That's a great question. Yeah, it looks different, right? Mm. It looks way different. Because now, now the the space lies in the the um, leading edge of thought mm. and advancement. Right? And so average, yes, I, I will admit, average now is really, really good in most places. <laughs> and that's the problem, right? Average now is a five-bedroom house in, in, in a suburb somewhere. Yeah. Right? That's kind of average, right? If you get a three-bedroom house or, or, or a, a two-bedroom apartment, all that's pretty average. 
Yeah. And yet that is still comfortable and can be deemed good in most of the world. Yeah. So, so the, the proponent in me says, okay, then why do you want more? Hmm. Then why are you jealous of that person on the talk show who has a six bedroom house? Uh oh. And the reason is because in our DNA, we still have that seed of betterment, of hmm. improvement. Now, the ones who are smart, the ones who are driven by that same DNA that our ancestors had, see it as a way to figure out how to build, create, teach in order to build that as opposed to finding a quick fix way. Hmm. And those who do that reap the rewards of greatness because then they go out and build new things on the leading edge of thought. They figure out new ways to build things, new ways to create things, new ways to express who they are in music or literacy or, or literature or, or, or create or creative measures. So they become the new geniuses mm -hmm. because of their ability to see what they want, which is natural. You want more. We want more. It's a natural thing, Absolutely. right? That's human it's beings. Yeah. But the ones who see that as a way to say, you know what, how can I, what can I do to be better today to bring me closer to getting that? Right. Whereas the ones who there's, there's two, there's two sets. There was a set that sees the six bedroom house that sees the better car and gets jealous. And because the, the step extra to do that requires some mental energy, mm. some physical energy, they decide to sit in where they're at in average, in complacency, in comfort, rather than deal with the discomfort of more knowledge, more physical work or whatever Ooh. to reach out. But the ones who do, and there are there are many, are the ones who become the warriors. I call it the warriors, right? Mm. The wolves mm. that lead the village because the rest of the village is okay having heat and wa running water. <laughs> so that's I mean? a great point because, you know, um, I oftentimes speak about this programming or this TV series called the Whatever That Built America, right? So it's either mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the machines that built America, the men that built America, and you always see this pattern of there are a handful of individuals, oftentimes they're interlinked with one another, right? And those individuals happen to be the only ones who are building things for society, right. and the rest of the masses point to them and either ridicule them, envy them, uh, slander them, etc. But meanwhile, these people are actually moving the needle forward. So it might be the Edisons of the world, the yep. Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, yep. etc. We yep. want to call them Illuminati as opposed to these individuals are the ones who ventured out yes. from the masses in order yes. to move us forward. So I did want to get into something which you just pointed to, which is there is, you know, the wolves that are developing, the, the, the warriors per se uh, of your given tribe or your given village. And then the question is, okay, are we born to be great, all of us? Or some people just reserved to be average? Are some people just going to be in this, you know, kind of heap of the masses? Then I want to take a step back into programming or conditioning, right? Mm -hmm. Is, I know this is something we talk about more frequently, obviously, off camera than we could even on camera. But let's dive into this concept of social programming, or conditioning into being average. Like if our natural state of being is to aspire towards greatness, towards right. innovation, towards building, then what is it that gets put into us or extracted from us? And what is that process that takes away that yearning to be great? Right. Or that going forward into that greatness? What does that look like? That's a great question. So I think, and, and what's beautiful about, about what I do you know, as I'm a, you know, I'm a part-time freelance sociologist. Mm -hmm. I'm a part-time freelance psychiatrist. I'm a part-time freelance economist, right? Right. And so I, so I, I view, I view things from a, from the perspective of always studying, mm -hmm. and being a football coach with large bodies of people and, and organizational patterns, and 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 going to schools and being in companies for ten years, ten years as, as a CFO. And then my wife's in, in HR and having friends and just being older, kind of seeing neighborhoods, how they function. What happens is this. I believe this to be true. We all, in our quiet time, seek, well, we all, in our quiet time, hear something. Mm. 
mm. and feel something in our gut. I believe all of us do. And I believe this because I talk to people all the time, either about fitness or about finances or about their career and conversations. And I hear it all the time. You know, I want to, I want to get a promotion. I want to do better. Yeah. I want to lose weight. So we all hear this in our, in our private thoughts. Yeah. We hear it, a, a subtle voice in our head, a subtle tug at our heart or our spirit. And because we're so busy or distracted or both, we don't let that marinate hmm. enough, right? In today's world, it's harder than ever because when I was in my teens and early 20s, when that voice was talking to me, I had to listen to it. Yeah. Right? I had a radio, but it was like, it was an old radio. I, I, you know, my car, my, my, my parents' car radio wasn't great. I had no, no phone. I had no internet. So the TV, we had three channels on our TV. Wow. Cable, we had 20. So you so had more room to be bored. You essence. had more room to be bored. And uh. in your boredom is when you're forced to have discussions. Mm. It's like when you're when you're when you're with somebody for a long time, and you're dating or married, and it's like after a while you just sit on the couch and the TV's on, yeah. And then one day the power goes out, yeah. Or your wife takes you to a, a bed and breakfast with no TV for your honeymoon, <laughs> for your anniversary, like we did. Not for TV, <laughs> TV at, baby. <laughs> and so you're forced to like talk and yeah. have discussions. Wow. And so the same is true with our with our inner spirit. We're not forced to to do that, and it, oh, that's and, good. And we that's get good. used to we get used to just a cursory relationship with our with our inner self, mm. kind of a like it's just like very. Uh, it's laxity. We tolerate each other, right? Yeah. We I tolerate my inner self. I don't really do. I don't really love it. I don't really talk to it about any any deep stuff. You know, I I distract it when I feel like you know. While, As a matter of fact, we're life. mostly we're mostly annoyed with it. Mostly annoyed with it. Yeah. You know, because we run, it's like, what type of relationship would you have where you constantly ignore the person, you constantly are looking to run from the person and distract yep. yourself from that person? Yep. That relationship is what we have with our internal self. Yep. And to me, that looks like somebody that you have a disdain for. Exactly. exactly. You know, so what you're saying is is yeah. right on par. So, so when you sit there and you hear that voice saying, I, I don't want to be average. Mm -hmm. You told me, this is your inner self. You told me when you were 12, you wanted to be an astronaut. Tell me when, you, when, when we were 13, you said we wanted to be millionaires. When we were, when we were 14, you wanted to be rappers. You wanted to be, you know, what happened to that? Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, stuff happens, you know. And so you're ignoring it. And then when you go out into the world and you're at work or you're at football practice or you're at whatever, now you're around other people who, have, who also haven't had time to deal with that situation at home with your inner self mm. and you all just just love each other because now you can you can really you can really distract yourselves Absolutely. and then and then the few people who had that difficult talk last night with their inner self they stand out wow. because now they remember what that person said to them last night mm. that inner self and it, and it carries more weight so now in practice they're like come on guys let's stop messing around or at work, they're the one who has a book with them. Or they're the one at school who goes to lunch and studies for the test instead of going off and goofing off and playing playing quarters or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is we as, as a world, we're, we're more distracted where we don't have that conversation with ourselves. I think we all have that 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 tug Absolutely. and that voice, but we distract it and we don't have, and we don't want to sit there and like because it hurts. Yeah. It's 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 uncomfortable. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to have a drink or, or smoke some weed or read a book or watch some porn yeah. or do something stupid or act or goof off or what or look at TikTok or whatever. That's, that's much easier to do than to deal with what you want to deal with in terms of how you feel about who you are and where you are in your life. I'm getting chills right now. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. 
Now back to the show. I have this theory, and it's more than a theory at this point. It's almost proving itself time and time again. And that is, our society is built around coping mechanisms to take us away from that internal voice. Like, that's how I see things. When I'm looking at why do we do what we do? Why do we create the things that we create? Why are we so obsessed with the things we're obsessed with? Right. Like all the trinkets of life. And don't get me wrong. I do believe in opulence and wealth and building that, you know, for yourself and others. However, it's like, why are we so obsessed with the toys? Why are we so obsessed with getting the newest whatever it is? And when I get to the bottom of it and dig deeper and deeper, I realize that, oh, oh, these are all used as better and better mechanisms to run from ourselves. Right. Right. The, The more progressive the phone gets the more different levels of distraction and the deeper I can get into that distraction, right? Like you're saying, as you're going through and, you know, watching porn or whatever else it may be, yep. the deeper you're getting into that rabbit hole, the further you are from yourself. Yep. So exactly. when I really started looking at it, like what you're saying is right on par is we've built a society in essence to keep us in that state of average as opposed to you know, getting back to our natural core, which is making hard things hard. And so I did want to kind of get even deeper on this thing of social conditioning programming, because you talked about the inner voice, right? The true authentic self is Mm -hmm. when you talked about the one that keeps us accountable to our own word, Mm -hmm. right? And then there is the social conditioned voice, Mm -hmm. that other discourse that's going on internally, that's telling us, you know, you're not enough, you don't deserve you're worthless, you're better off doing something else, et cetera. Like the one that's conditioned in us from childhood. I really want to tap into that and even get into like some of our own stories, right? Right. We ain't, yeah. got, to, we ain't got to, you know, unpack the entire childhood. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. this podcast is for. But yeah, it's like, do you recognize aspects of your childhood when you started hearing those voices of maybe you should just be more realistic? Yeah, of course. So, so, oh. so I go, I go one, one level here mm-hmm. and one level deeper. Perfect. Um, so I'm not one of those, those what do you call it, uh, theorists. Um, what do you call it? Uh, I don't believe like there's some, there's some you know, mechanism where the people are trying to trick the human yeah. species. Yeah, but, like uh, conspiracy theorists, what, right. Yeah, yeah it's conspiracy theorists, right. yeah, exactly. But, I'm, but I am, again, going back to our competitive spirit. Like, I think yeah. we're naturally competitive. As a, as a, as a spe- All species are naturally competitive. Absolutely. It's survival. Right? Every animal competes. Yeah. Right for survival and procreation, mm-hmm. survival, procreation. Every single species does it. That's why lions Absolutely. and tigers fight. Yeah, right. Simple as that. So, I told you last week how I, I, I was learning these tools around content, mm. right? Chat GP, Chat GBT, and Canvas, you know, templates, and all these things, right? Mm. And I told you how a part of me was like, man, I don't want to tell anybody about yeah. this. It's kind of, <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stick your power now, right? So. It's not because I'm I'm selfish. I mean, I think I'm 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 very unselfish. Yeah. But we naturally want to see ways that we're better than our competitors. Absolutely. In life. That's why we work out. Yeah. That's why we study. That's why we, you know, go to seminars. We're trying to find ways to be better, which is how the whole human race expands, mm. right? So, but when you do that, what happens is the ones who don't do it or don't want to do it for whatever reason, you naturally create ways to harness your power to be, without saying it in a better way, to be destructive to them. Hmm. Right? So the ones, like you said, the ones who are creating ways for, for me to keep Tanache on his cell phone longer, right, are doing that because they realize that, and, and, <laughs> and we know this to be true, the ones who create those, they don't, they don't use, use the phone. those. Nope. Because they, they know how powerful they are. It. Think about that Absolutely. for a minute. The ones who created all these apps yeah. that track your usage and yeah. send you more stuff, they know how powerful it is, so they don't use it. Absolutely. Right? So they, but they love technology. Obviously, they do because they want to create it in the first place. Right. So the ones who are smart enough and competitive enough to create these advantages are reluctant at first to give it to you. Like when I learned how to eat right and train right, I didn't want to tell the other cornerbacks that I was competing against what I was doing. Absolutely. Right? So after a while, they learned what I was doing. But once I realized they weren't going to do it, oh, oh shit, now, now, now I'm really going to go full board. Absolutely. So what happens is, is at that level, 
we're conditioned because the ones who understand how things work, the ones who are, who, who are who are curious about things, the ones who have have a natural appetite for for learning and growing, they learn. And when you don't follow suit, they say, "All right, well, I'm sorry, but you're going to be prey." Yeah. To what we know. Absolutely. Right. So now I'm going deeper. So what happens is, and, and these journeys are not just with technology. They're with everything, right? So, you know, one of our favorite books is Think and Grow Rich. Mm-hmm. One of our favorite concepts that you and I share is Law of Attraction, Quantum yeah. Physics, all that stuff. Well, Think and Grow Rich goes back 200 years. And and the premise is these founders, Rockefellers, yeah. uh, all those, all, all all those Nikki, guys. Yeah, yeah, Vanderbilt. All, they, they, yeah. they all understood what the secret was to greatness. Right. What the secret was to wealth. Yeah. The secret was to to sustainability. Mm. Right. And when they knew that they knew something that the rest didn't know, and then when they knew they knew something that the rest wouldn't do, they harnessed it. Whew. Right? So so yes, yeah, so I grew up with a certain belief system predicated on love though. Mm. On love. Right on protection, mm. right framed framed in a way to protect me from things. Right, yeah. so when my mom would say things like, "You know, you talk fine. You just you just trying to be like your daddy. My daddy talks fast." Or when my teacher, you know, would, would say that you know you should you should go to a trade school because college is mm-hmm. going to be out of your reach. All these things leave an imprint on you, and then the people around you. They protect your your love, your 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 subconscious safety and your confidence by saying things that are not necessarily going to make you risk things yeah. that are necessary to grow, mm. right? So rather than so when I told my mom I didn't want to take classes that had teach that had speaking in it, or I didn't want to do a presentation, she would she would comfort me. And say, oh, you know, uh, it's okay. You know, you'll get through it. Instead of teaching me to fight through those things. Yeah. To deal with the, the, the discomfort of doing stuff, of stuttering or talking fast. And I think all those things aid you in a belief that when you grow up, you know, certain things are are just how they are. My parents were both, you know, came from, from families where no one went to college. My dad yeah. didn't go to college. My mom didn't go to college. And so that was never even in our framework of thinking until football came. Mm. And because football, because playing football meant going to college first, that was the only reason really I thought about college. Hmm. And then once I did, now my sister followed suit. Mm. Now my kids mm. follow suit. Now my nephews and nieces who see me and their other uncles and cousins, now they follow suit, right? But it wasn't even my, it, it wasn't even in my forethought. Yeah. Right? It wasn't even it wasn't even in my back of my head. It was like early on, it's just like whatever, school, school, whatever. It was my almost the, the opposite military. conditioning in essence. Yeah, it is. And yeah. a lot but a lot of it is like when people think conditioning, they think either that the world is conspired against me, right? And I told you how that works basically, that those people are figuring out ways to do things and Absolutely. if you don't want to learn and grow with it, then you become prey to it, right? Yeah. But then also we think that uh, the messaging is just like you suck. No, you're a it's so it's much usually more the subtle. opposite. It's usually it's so subtle. Absolutely. And oftentimes, again, cloaked in love, right? Yeah. And so protection. I want to get in, I want to get into the discussion of love, right? Because what we oftentimes deem or view as love is actually fear in disguise. Yeah, hundred right? percent. So when our parents are telling us, you know, don't step into that thing because you probably won't succeed or, you know, the rates of somebody succeeding or this compared to that. When they're telling us all these statistics and being rational minded and being realistic, they're simply rooted in fear. And they've justified that fear as love, concern, right? Mm-hmm. Risk aversion. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because when you see a little kid in their natural state, they will, I mean, they would damn near come close to cussing you out. If you tell them you can't do something, like 100%. a kid would will resist what you with mean? everything. Like, exactly. Like I'm not a T-Rex. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. 
I yeah. am, like they will. I I'm talking T-Rex. about they will fight you to fight you. kingdom yeah. come that yep. they are what they say that they are yep. until they get obviously the the continuous program right or yep. the continuous messaging which then becomes a program becomes a story becomes a belief system. So uh, what I really want to get into is even this thing of socially we've basically some of us have come to a conclusion where we say I'm just born to be this. And this is good enough and this is fine. But unraveling that and saying, no, that's actually rooted in fear. Like you might right. not, you might not recognize it as fear at this very moment. Right. But that's how fear works. Fear works in disguise. Fear works right. in cloaks. That's how the ego is able to maneuver and to keep us in a state of quote unquote survival. If it was so apparent and we could see exactly how it was working, we wouldn't be subconsciously doing it. Therefore, we would always be fixated with it. Right. Right? So I really just wanted to dig even that third level deeper, right? Because you and I, we always going to go, you know, at least another layer. There's always another layer. Always, always. You know, let's get into that conversation of then the reason why we do have this belief that I'm just meant to be here. And we won't call it average, by the way. Most of us aren't going to call it average. We're going to justify where we are as fine. Yeah. But I say like fine is a subsidiary of the word average, right? Yeah, then, oh, then How are you doing? Like, I am fine. Yeah, then it's same How's your day? Sure. I'm fine. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. <laughs> they're at least they're at least three houses apart. Yeah, at least oh, at on least. the same block. Uh, yeah. At yeah. least on the same block. So I really wanted you to get into that conversation of like fear and how fear disguises itself. And then it leads us into these states in our life where we're just complacent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's a, that's a great segue. Uh, and there's two there's two ways I'll go. I have, I have notes mm. here. Let's uh, it. So the first one, there's, there was a game show when I was growing up called Let's Make a Deal. Mm. Right? And what it was is basically, I think there's a there's like a, a new version of it now. Uh, but there would be like a, a, you know, ten thousand dollars right here uh-huh. in front of you. Or you could have what's behind door number one. Right? And most of us today yeah. have something in front of us that is not horrible. Yes. <laughs> right? It ain't great. Yeah. It ain't great. I promise you. Right? No one, very few people. And what's crazy, the ones who have something great in front of them, they're the ones who are still saying no. I want yes, out the three. door. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's crazy. Like Jay-Z, Beyonce, they ain't selling. Yeah. They, have, they have great... But yeah. they're still so so everyone else has something good in front of them. Uh, right? Not horrible. Mm. And so because it's not horrible, they're not gonna give it up huh. and risk it. Yeah. So we all kind of say, you know, and and but what's 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 crazy about it is we went on the game show of life to get what's behind door number two. <laughs> That's why it sucks. That's why it feels bad to us. You're preaching right now. It wouldn't word. feel, dude. Yeah. You know, I'm fine. No, you're not, because you, you wouldn't be feeling bad at all. You wouldn't yeah. be saying, "Well, I'm living for my kids. It's about the kids now." You wouldn't be yeah. saying that. Absolutely. I have not once in my life said that. Not once. And I have yeah. two kids that I think have have had so far a pretty good life. Absolutely. Have they been on every every trip? No. Have they gotten every new pair of J's? No. But I believe that they would tell you or tell whoever asked them privately that so far in their 19 and 16 years of life that they have had a great time living. Mm. But I have never once in my life said it's about the kids. That's a cop out. Yeah. Right? Because what you're saying is I'd rather take this kind of cool life and not go for what I really want. Wow. Which is to have the body I want still, to have the dream job I want still, to have whatever I want still. So I'll just use excuses and stay here. So that's the first framework. Right. The second one is every acorn is meant to be a tree. Who? Every one of them. Yep. Is meant to be a tree. Every one of them. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. The difference is you got to toil it. Yeah. You got to water it. You got to get your ass out there at five in the morning and put your hands in the freaking dirt. Yeah. Right. That's the difference. So most people will say, you well, I already got five acorn trees, right? So this this acorn nut, I don't really need to nourish it, right? And so my point to people is that, no, all of us have, whatever was in your pocket or your bag, 
that's what you're meant to nourish. Mm. Just because you happen to accidentally make five, you know, you know, produce five, six trees, but there's eight more seeds left, that's what you're meant to do. So until you do that, you will always kind of have a little bit of emptiness. Yeah. You know, and you'll go to your grave, you know, with that book unwritten, that song unwritten, that business unstarted, that weight unlost, because you decided to just, you know, be cool with the five trees. So I don't believe I believe that's that's where we get stuck. We just like, this is just not horrible enough for me to risk it. Yeah. Right? And I'm saying the, the pain that I know is more comfortable. Yeah than the perceived loss I exactly. may have if I exactly. step into something I don't. And I wanted, exactly. I wanted to ask you this question and anybody who's viewing right now, um, you don't have to per se be a religious individual. I don't see myself as religious. I see myself as connected to the divine. However, I was raised fundamental Christian. And this is a question I often now ask individuals who say they know the Bible inside out. I say, what is the first commandment that God gave in the Bible? Do you know? Unc? I don't know. So most people might say, well, the first commandment was don't eat from the tree, right? Don't right. eat from the tree, good in life, da, da, da. Some people might jump to Leviticus, jump to Exodus and say, oh, it's the Ten Commandments, right? Some people may find something beforehand. But the first commandment that man got as soon as man was formed and created in this story in Genesis was be fruitful and multiply, that's yep. the very first commandment that man was given in Genesis. Be fruitful, Be fruitful and, multiply. and multiply, which meant, yep. as far as your analogy with the acorns, is you're not only meant to bear fruit, but you're meant to multiply Amen. for the rest of your existence. Amen. Yep. That is the purpose of of your life to continuously produce. And we love to talk about made in the image and likeness of God. What does that mean? Like, who is God? What is God? What is this force, right? Universal love, universal abundance, but at the core, it is creator. And even if you look at the reference of God within every single mythos, every single religious text, etc., God is always the creator. So if you're to say that you're created in the image of a creator, creator. what does that make you? Right. Even if you, th if you think of our, our iPhones, right? That's, that's, yeah, that's gold. We are yeah. the creators of this and therefore it's created to do what? Yeah. <laughs> to create, to, to help create. facilitate exactly. creation. So when I look at this, um, this that's dichotomy that we that's have, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And I look at this dichotomy because this was something I had to come to terms with is there were times when I was being genuinely heavily creative. I was completely in a creative space. And then there were times when I was completely out of that space. And the times I was out of it is because I was looking for how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to put something together that's sustainable? This, that, and the third, right? I wasn't trusting what yeah. my actual life experience was about. And yeah. so I suffered in those times. And I realized I wasn't suffering because I was worried about the bills or whatever it was. I was suffering because I was not in my purpose, my intended use case right. as a human being, which is creation. Right. Right. right? I, I like right. to use this example of the hammer and a tennis racket. You can use a hammer to play tennis. You can use a tennis racket to hammer in a nail. Yeah. But they're always going to be misfits. That's and if they point. had a voice, yep. they would always feel as if they were in the wrong placement. And that's us. We're doing yeah. things as far as we're consuming and we're wondering why we're stressed the hell out. We're wondering why we're always in a state of anxiety and depression and feeling as if we're stuck, not realizing your purpose is not as a consumer. That's it right. has always been as a that's creator. Right. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's so good. That is so good, man. And and what's funny, what's crazy is that when, we always do this when we talk. Mm. We like it just it just it just fosters more 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 depth right yes so when you said when you said be fruitful and multiply right mm. so i i immediately thought okay many of us when you said the creator right we are in the yeah. image of the creator so we're meant to create mm. and you and i are creative people in terms of like like the most the most normal term the most yeah. the most uh obvious way that term is meant to to, to, to be writers yeah. mm. musicians uh, actors or whatever, speakers, like we create, right? Yeah. And so, so my, my, my thought was, what if somebody's like, I mean, I don't do, I'm not creative. Yeah. And, okay. Well, the real undertone of that is this. So when you are in the, when you are creating something from the earth, right? You're creating, um, 
your, your, the land is there and you can create from the land by doing things, by working on it, by planting, by watering, by nurturing, by toiling, all these things. Even before you know what is being produced, you know what the process to get that is. Right? So what does that mean to somebody who's not a writer or not a singer or not a, or not a, not a, a thinker? Right? Is get up and work on you. I always, I always say, I, I do a talk. I say, you know, it's a parents. It's not the, it's not the seed I'm worried about. I'm the no. soil. Mm. I want the kid to have good soil. So when you teach wow. your kid to get up and work at football, at, at calculus, at ASB president, at what, at whatever it is, at skateboarding, like don't question whether or not he can be in the NBA. Question or not whether or not he's developing the right soil that will help him be whatever. So wow. I think what, to your point, is when you wake up, and you realize I am a creator because my because my father, my God, whatever that God is to you, was a creator, and I and I and I don't know what I'm going to create, but I know the process. Mm. What that means is me making sure that I am of fertile soil, that I am a the embodiment of something that will eventually produce something. And until I figure it out, I'm going to do whatever I know produces that: sleep, read, study, write, meditate, think educate, love. Oh, we, we know, don't play dumb. We know yeah. we know what the tenets are to living a, a, a fruitful life. Absolutely. But I don't know what the fruit's going to be, but I know yeah. at some point, if I do those things, sleep, rest, teach, love, mm. pray, exercise, you, don't, don't play dumb. If we do those things consistently, read, it's going to produce That's so good. something. That's so, so until good. you know what that, that, that fruit is, right? start building, you know, making the soil right. So uh, exactly what you're saying is, in essence, you are the first creation. Yes. And you are the yes. last creation. You yes. are your greatest project. Yes. I love that. The book is produced out of that, right? Like you're out saying. Of that. Like, exactly. Yes. When you become, then those things will come out of you right. or produce. It's funny because I always used to look at it this way. And this is what happens when you're raised with a poverty mentality or scarcity mentality. You're always chasing money. You're seeking money. You're thinking that you go and get money, right? That you yep. earn money. But then yep. you start to learn as you you know learn these uh, spiritual truths and uncover the way that the universe actually works is that we become attractive to money. So that's the first part, right? First we say, okay, I'm going to attract money. So now we, correct. That's attractive. the difference, attractive yes. to money. So yes. what we first do is, okay, I got to attract money. So what process, procedure do I do in order to attract that money? No, 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 sweetheart. You got to become the type of person who is attractive to money. <laughs> yes. Attractive yes. to opportunity, which yes. is really attractive to service. Yes. And why are people attracted to a Coach Bobby, to an Aquarius Wave? Is because there's something that we are bearing as fruit that is a byproduct of the things that we do day in, day out, now in our lives, that yes. we might have not done before, right? Yes. Why was nobody they, listening before? Yes. Because we weren't producing fruit. And they see it. They see it. Exactly. They smell it. They know it's fertile. They it's know it's fertile. They know the soil of that person, is, and they can see it. It's, 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 it's obvious to everyone. Hmm. You say, oh, man, how do you, how do you do that? Everyone here knows you. Everyone talks to you. Yep. What do you do? I work out. Okay, well, that's, that was yesterday. Yeah, I write and I read, <laughs> but that was yesterday. How, why, why today are you at a track meet and people are coming up to you? Because wow. I do that stuff. Wow. I do that stuff. When I walk around, I'm walking around as fertile soil and they know that whatever they plant with me, whether, whether it's a business uh, partnership, whether it's mm. coaching their son, you know, talking about parenting, whether it's speaking engagement, they know whatever they talk about or do about with me is going to produce something. Hmm. Fruitful, right? And I, I do. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm gonna do a video on that one. When you become, then things yeah. will come. Yes. Then things will come. But become yes. people do it backwards. Like right? they don't become the thing first. Like become the bright husband first, and then a wife will show up. I was okay. <laughs> I literally <laughs> made a video yesterday, Unc. I said everybody wants to be married, but nobody wants to be a husband or a wife. Like, yes. Everybody wants to have a baby because a baby's cute, but who wants to be a parent? Exactly. Who? Exactly. Nobody. Because it's showing in the things that you were doing, the way in which you were living your life. Yep. Yep. You still run into the club. You still run in a kick it or whatever it yeah. is. And yeah. you say, no, I'm going to change when the baby comes. No. Now that's cap. Work. That's cap. Yeah. 
Yep. That's more captain graduation. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bluff. <laughs> I'm you a won't retreat today, back to your old ways. <laughs> Shout out to graduation season. I know, You right? will retreat back to your old ways in one shape or form, right? Yep. And so, oh, this is so good. See, I'm telling you, we need seven hours to do a real podcast together. That's I why know, we're going right? to have thousands of episodes. But I, again, I wanted to then get into this aspect of some folk will do something and coach you've got this your entire life right people see the results of how you are of the things that you invest your time and your energy into and they tell you well first they say it's genetics so then you bump that out the way you show them your skinny pictures as a kid so now they say well i've been doing what you're doing but i'm not getting the result and i call major cap right Yeah. And, and and I'm, I want you to get on this, but there was just one memory that came to mind. And I had a conversation with this dude. He's about 60 years old, uh, brother about, you know, five, six, five, seven, yacked. I'm talking about yacked. Po- pocket Hercules, right? <laughs> he would just jacked to the ump. You could see every fiber oh in goodness. his muscles just rippling. Oh 60, 60, 61 years old, right? And look good. Face was still right. Face was still intact. It wasn't like the face was sixty, but the body. Yeah, yeah, was yeah, 20. yeah. Exactly right. Like he looked far beyond his age, and I had a conversation with him, and we're talking about you know just habits, etc. And he said, you know, there's this dude who comes in. He's like, I usually, you know, he's a Christian brother. He's like, I usually, uh, you know, I try, I try to be right with the Lord, but he's like, man, sometimes folks just be pissing me off. And he said, there's a dude who comes up to him all the time, and he says, man, like I just don't get like how you get the results because like I come here all the time. Like, I'm always here, but it's like, it just doesn't work. And he's telling this man who you see in there grunting, you know what I mean? When everybody else is looking and, you know, oh, that's weird or whatever. He's that guy in the hoodie sweating, dripping down, you know, you know, streams of sweat. And yet people are coming to him with, you know, 100 pounds or 70 pounds of excess weight and telling him, I'm doing what you're doing. So I want you to speak on this thing of. Like first getting over like BS in ourselves, right? Yeah. Because when it comes to this thing of maybe some people born to be average, some people are convinced of this because of their past experiences. I did something and it didn't give me the result. So therefore I must be simply what I am, right? I tried to lose weight before. I tried to start a business before. I tried to get my finances in order before, but I did not get the result. Can you dig into that one? This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. Most of us, when we start something and stop, whether it's a business, whether it's school, whether it's weight loss, we, we're in belief purgatory, right? We believe enough to start, but not enough to finish it. Wow. Right? Because if you did, if you, if you didn't believe you could do it, you would never start. But if you believe without a doubt it will work, you wouldn't stop. Facts. So that's, so that's, what, so that's what it is. It's, it's belief purgatory. But I think the more important thing is, and I do find this all the time in my, in my, you know, my physical coaching practice, my boot camps, my personal training, my my football players is that I learned early on that if I wanted something, I was going to marry it. Hmm. Right. And I was going to love it unconditionally. Now, what does that mean? Coach Bobby, what that means is I'm, I'm loving it regardless. No, I'm loving it without any expectation of outcome. Wow. And because most people, get into a relationship with their body or their workout or their business or their their law degree aspirations, they expect something in return. And so they stop serving when the person or object of their desire is not serving them back. Mm. And so I learned early on that you have to you have to love the weight loss or love your bodybuilding program unconditionally. Right, I tell the story all the time how I was I was playing football. I would train, and I would lift, and I would run. And every every year we would do like this conditioning test at at, at in college. We do the forty yard dash, you do the bench press, you do all these things. In my first two years, I was like upset because I trained my butt off, and and my figures weren't what I wanted them to be. 
I didn't run fast fast enough for my for my preference. I didn't do the, the bench press enough reps. And I was like, man, I was upset. And then I, I realized a week later that the season still went on. And so the third season, I approached the whole off season differently. I said, I'm not, I'm I'm gonna train the same way regardless. Yeah. I'm gonna train because training is gonna make me a better football player. Mm. Like the same way I tell my, my kids I love them, I take care of them, I bring my wife coffee, I, I love her, I write her notes, I you know, I try to get her stuff. I do that because I love our relationship. I don't mm. do it as long as my son is a good listener. Wow. I don't do it as long as my daughter and I have a good relationship. I didn't I don't do the football training as long as I'm getting better. I do it because I love football, loved. Yeah. And this is part of my way of showing how much I love it. And when you do that, it removes all expectations. And only when you remove the expectations do the things come to you. Right? So that guy who's 60 yeah, that's a bar. started 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And was like, I'm I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah. Period. I'm not buff yet. Yeah. But I'm a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, he got buff. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he stayed buff. So the wow. guy who's doing it, he just wants to have muscle. He doesn't want to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. He wants to have muscle. Right? I don't want I don't want to have kids. My my kids love their daddy. I want to be a good father. Regardless mm -hmm. of what the hell they do. Regardless of what the hell, I want to be a good father, regardless of how they act, what they do. So what I do is not predicated on, on how good they are in school or how good they are in football or it's how good they are to are. me. It's how good I am. It's your right? identity. It's my identity. Yeah. So when you do that, the rest of it is easy. But very few people are willing to say, you know what? I'm going to keep loving you. I'm going to keep working out. I'm going to keep getting up. I'm going to keep reading. I got three Ds in a row. I'm going to keep studying. No, I'm only going to study if I can get an A. I'm only gonna write music if I can get into a studio next year. Uh, no, the, are you a, the, are you a musician or not? The amount of are you a writer or Moses? not? Are you a this football so player good. or not? Oh, you know my what I'm God. saying? Yes. No, the amount of times I have heard, I'm only going to treat them like wifey or hubby material once they put a ring on it. No, man. Every time I hear that, I think to myself, do you not understand that the reason why you get the ring is because you are wifey or yeah. because you are Yeah, mother? exactly. Because I see you as that already. Yeah, exactly. So what, what you're give saying it to you. is so on point. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I just, again, please d say that one more time because that's like a bar and I, I feel like I, I might have interrupt you. I just need that for, for a short for me to remember. Say what again? Remind, remind the folks. You said... I will only start from there. Yeah, so people people say to themselves, they'll say, I I will only do I will only eat right mm. as long as I lose a pound a week. Mm. Or I will only keep studying and, and going to my tutor and staying up late if I continue to get a better, better grade every time. Or I'll only I'm only gonna train with you, Coach Bobby, and do backpedal drills if you can promise me that at the end of this my son's gonna start. Right. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling myself, I'm telling whoever listens that you don't you don't do that. You don't become a football player by doing football stuff. You become a football player because you start by day and one by identifying as a football player. That's I identify as a good father. That's why I do the things that make me a good father. I identify as a good husband. Do I screw up? Of course I do. But I do the things that make me a good husband because I identify from day one as a good husband. So until you sit there and say, you know what? I'm a rapper. Mm. I don't have a contract yet. I'm a rapper, mm. right? I'm a lawyer. I'm 14 years old. I'm going into high school. I'm already a lawyer, right? Mm. Do the things, act the way that you want to be, be it now, and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. That's so good. That's so good. You know what I mean? And so I know, I know what you mean at a visceral, visceral level. So even for myself, like I'm in this space in my life now where I finally identified with being a businessman, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a difference between, it's like, especially when you're in these type of like obvious creative endeavors, as you call them, and it's easy for you to say, okay, like I'm a content creator, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the third, right? But then you're also mad that you're not being as lucrative as you might want to be, or you're not creating, you know, a true business out of it. Yep. But it's like, okay, let's say you started up a salon and you're the best at doing hair on the planet. You get your building, you got your book of business, et cetera. But every month 
or every quarter you're looking at your, you know, your P&L and you think to yourself, why am I not profitable even though I got all these clients coming in? Yet you have only looked at your statement sheets either when there's an emergency, when right. there's not enough, right. or at the end when it's now tax season is due, right? Right. And so if you look at that, your identity is not as a business owner. It's as exactly. somebody who does hair. It's not even exactly. as somebody who's financially successful who does hair. Because there's a difference between all these sectors, right? Yeah, like what exactly, we truly yeah. identify with. And we have to shift that mindset in every we aspect. So using that same analogy, it's like, I'm now that quote unquote salon owner, right? Who's saying every day I take care of my business because right. I run, I'm a business owner, right? Right. There's a difference. Again, it's, it's like, why do most athletes go broke? Because they're not business people. Right. And they don't exactly. identify as such. And so they go exactly. broke after. But Magic Johnson, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan, these individuals identified themselves as businessmen. Yep. In the process of them the process. also being exactly. yeah. superstars. LeBron right? James. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. LeBron James. Jay-Z. Kanye. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I mean, yeah. Kardashian. Right. And, 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 so what, and what's you, crazy about it is this. Mm -hmm. Is that even if it's neutral, yeah. right? Even if you're just like naive to it, mm. it's detrimental, yeah. right? But more often than not, we actually have a negative connotation, whether subconsciously or or literally or directly from our from our peers, parents, friends, kids, wives, husbands. We have a direct um, contrast and and negative connotation to that other side mm. that we that we need to 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 embrace to be great right so many of us is like we feel not not only are we are we naive about about taking the next step and, and embracing the other side of, of of whatever we're doing in our case the business side but we also have this like negative connotation to it absolutely like it feels weird to be like yeah overly serious about the business part of it. Like why, mm -hmm. you know, why is Bobby on, you know, on social media every day now trying to get his numbers up, trying to, you know, there's like, there's like this, this weird dynamic that we are not only afraid or, or, or naive to it, but we actually feel like it, it's, it's not cool or not mm -hmm. the thing or not part of our brand or not, you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I think yeah. it can be even, even not just, uh, neutral, it can be detrimental in many ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. That non-identification is going to be a detriment because if you're not identifying as a fit person, you're inherently, whether like you said, it's subconscious or conscious, you're identifying as a person who's not in shape. Yeah. So there has to be a shift in your identity into somebody who is something either then or else the default is you're going into exactly. the chaotic state, exactly. right? They say like the natural state of things as humans is atrophy. Right. Because we have a decision or a conscious choice as far as creation or non-creation. Right. Every other being on this planet besides the Good human, point. as far as we know, right, doesn't have the capacity to be conscious. So they're just yeah. going with nature and nature is always growing, always no expanding. creation survival. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Whereas a human can say, I'm not going to today. And so That's things true. will eventually atrophy. Right. If you don't do mm -hmm. your dishes. Your dishes are going to clutter up. They're going to pile up. They're going to start to stink. They're going to start to mold. And eventually it's going to become a larger problem that you're now facing. And yep. those things happen to us emotionally, number one, mm -hmm. right? Where later down the stage, we might have not, we might have not noticed the emotional detriment now. We just ignore that small little emotion that's trying to get our attention, that notification that is an emotion trying to get our attention. Mm -hmm. But once it becomes a 911 alert, now we're in a hospital bed and it's a dis-ease in the body. Yep. And so we have to start to recognize these things and say, look, there is no neutrality in all of life. Like things are decaying or things are growing. Yeah, are growing. Yeah. And we are a part of nature as much as we try to, you know, separate ourselves from this ecosystem. And so when it comes to this conversation of greatness, greatness just happens to be the word that we use as far as being a part of that natural flow of what we are. Right. Every tree is going to its greatest capacity. And I, I used to love this. It was like a, a mind shifting idea, which is if the human was that acorn, right? They said they would only grow to half its capacity as a tree. <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. That's so true. If at all. And that's if crazy. At all. I, was, I was thinking the same, 
the same logic, right? Because uh-huh. I heard something uh, from somebody, might have been, might have been Bo Easton, mm. but he was saying how, we're, like, back to your point too, how we can decide, right? We're, we're the only species that can decide. But because of that, we, we, we choose half of what we can be, right? Literally. And he was saying, like, like a lion can only be a lion. He doesn't apologize for it. He doesn't, like, like level down because... Because the zebra feels bad. You know, you know what I mean? He's a fucking yeah. lion. He's a freaking lion, dude. And we are the only species that's, that, that, that does that. But we don't say, well, you know, I'm, I'm born to be great. I'm born in my creator's image. I'm born to be great. So that's, just how, that's how it is. We say, well, I'll decide today. I'll do this. And it's yeah. crazy because no other species has that option. Right? A hawk can do one thing. Hunt. Period. Other small birds. Like, I'm, Period. I'm for, sorry for you, small bird, right? Or you squirrel, whatever the heck you call, he does. That's what he does. And we are the, as, as Bowie says, we are the greatest predators on earth. Wow. They Not in a bad us. way, right? Mm-hmm. Like predators are, are, are immortalized in books and yeah. in, in, in documentaries. Hawks, yeah. lions, mm-hmm. cheetahs, uh, great, you know, great sharks, you know, uh, wow. They're immortalized, right? And we kill them all. Like none, none, wow. none, none, none of them can 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 subdue us, the human race. Wow. So we are the greatest predators, but we're the only ones that act below that. We act like we're, we're the we're the we're the cheetah that walks around like he's a a, a zebra. Apologize, <laughs> <laughs> apologize. Well, in this day and age, you can. Yeah, if you're a cheetah, have, you can choose to I be a zebra. Have, I don't have stripes, but but uh, I'm just like you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just As like a matter of fact, I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to turn vegan because this whole biting zebras in the butt, that whole thing is just not, it's not doing it for me. It's not doing it, it just, for you. It weighs heavy on my conscience. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wanted to step then into like solution mode, right? And we're going to end okay. each podcast at least with like takeaways. This okay. is where you can, I guess, uh, really deep into like the five steps of greatness if you want, or just okay. if you have some type of process, like how do we take then the steps of getting out of that unnatural state of average, of apathy, of indifference, and truly step into our greatness, right? Whatever yeah. that means for us. Like you said, it's different yeah. for where everybody is in life. Yep. So we'll dive into to five, steps of, five steps of greatness later, mm-hmm. uh, but, and partly because, and, and this is a perfect like kick off, you know, starting to kick this podcast podcast off because many people, when I come to them with the first two steps of greatness, which is want and believe, they're not really sure what they want because they've been mm-hmm. on this treadmill for so long, this average, and again, followers, listeners, viewers, we don't mean, we don't mean disrespect by average. Yeah. Right. There are many areas of, not many, but there's a few areas of my life where I'm kind of like, whatever, this is good enough too. So I get it. But if most of your life is like that, health, relationships, career, then that that becomes a predominance of your life. We don't want that. So because most people have been on this this average treadmill for so long, they don't really have or can identify with what they really want. Mm. Right? I'm too, it's too, I'm too late to go back to school. I'm too old to start a business. My kids are out of, you know, almost out of, out of the house. You know, my weight's too far gone. I, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I don't want to be, wear a bikini anymore or uh, whatever. So they're not really sure. And because of that, they're not sure what to believe, right? So for those people, for many of us, it can start with step three, which is go, which is developing small habits that you know make the soil richer, the mm-hmm. soil of, of you richer. And allow things to to grow. So what does that mean? You know what good sleep is. You know what feeding your mind correct things are, right? If you don't do audible or audio books, I suggest you do an audible a month. Mm. Like get a book on audible or one of the audio, audio book services and one book a month. So now out of the on average, I'm, I should probably uh, ask ChatGBT after this. On average, how many times are you in the car for more than five minutes? For yeah. most people, it's probably like 10 a week. Yeah. So if you took half those times and listened to an audible, audio book of something that's positive, positive or information or instructive, then you're feeding your brain and your, and your spirit at least 50% more better nutrients. 
Mm. So we got better sleep. We got better um, inputs. Have a have a hard copy book. So when you're somewhere in line somewhere somewhere, now you have that, and it's also a visual cue to your brain that I'm trying to get better. Yeah. So even if you spent twenty bucks on a book, hard copy book every month, and just put it on your nightstand, it sends a signal to your brain that I'm trying to get better. Mm-hmm. And what we can do is provide some list of some good starting points Absolutely. for books. Right. Absolutely. Then so that's so, so that spirit, that's that's you know internal health, then it's physical. Now, something physical that you can add. Go for mm-hmm. a walk. Do one of my workouts if you're up to that. You know, do 10 minutes of push-ups and crunches in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, have one day a week where you don't eat anything bad, whatever bad is to you, mm-hmm. right? Maybe it's maybe it's no meat. Maybe it's no sugar. Maybe it's no snacks after a certain time. One day or two days of that. So progressively do things, but the actions that you take will begin to create inside of you a richer soil. Mm-hmm. That will, I promise you, that will eventually begin to create ideas, thought patterns of things you can put into step one of my five steps, which is the one, and step two, which is the belief. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have those yet, these action steps, small action steps can help you begin to get back to where you were, I promise you, where you were 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's such a great point. Such a great point. When you start to initiate the universe will always meet you mm-hmm. always where you are where you are always. in essence and like you always. said again we already have all have the desire and you know one thing that i've learned about desire is you cannot destroy desire you can only justify your way out of it criticize it in others as well as yourself mm-hmm. right or fulfill those desires and yeah. when i say desires i'm not talking about you know uh going to sleep with your you're, you're, oh right, you're, no, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like no, no, yeah. that's not what yeah. I'm getting to. What I'm Thank you. Yeah, exactly. true desires. Because some people think, oh, desires means what I'm lusting after. No, those like no. those impure desires are actually coming from a place where you desire what let's say that thing represents emotionally. So mm-hmm. you look at, you know, your homie and his wife and you think, man, I want his wife, but no, what you actually want is the relationship they have. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's what you're yearning yep. for. So the true desires of your heart will start to you know, be made manifest when you actually start to meet life where it is. But um, as a true conclusion for this, Coach, I wanted you to let the people know just a little bit about the BTY Symposium, right? Like, how can people actually get access to yourself, whether it's, you know, speaking, coaching? And when I say, again, coaching, I'm not just meaning the physical aspect. It's really more the the mindset and the spirit shift. So uh, what is the BTY Symposium and how can people access this? Who is it for, et cetera? Yeah, so we have so at at, at my website coachbobbybluford.com, coachbobbybluford.com, on my social media at coachbobbybluford. That's YouTube, that's Instagram, that's Facebook. Um, I am the leader in 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 thought around greatness in two major ways, right? Physical and then spirit, spirit and mental. So I do. Workshops. I do speaking engagements, um, but I also do a a BTY or better better than yesterday mm-hmm. a student athlete symposium where I spend a whole day or two with high school age student athletes and I teach them much of what we're talking about today in terms of mental health, uh, mental strength, emotional health, emotional strength, and how that relates to what they already kind of know in terms of physical strength and ability. And I teach it in a way that makes them understand, A, what they're going through is normal, and they're all going through something, uh, and B, how to navigate these inevitable challenges that for some reason we adults think kids don't face. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I might be the only person uh, that's constructed a, a yeah. seminar workshop format for student athletes, um, so go to my website or my social media um, uh, outlets, and there will be a link to more information about the BTY uh, Student Athlete Symposium. And by the way, guys, the last BTY Symposium um, that Coach had was extremely successful, and there were actually, you know, I wouldn't say as many, but there were many students who weren't athletes, right? right. Like this is for all your kids, regardless right. of where they are. 
And I really just wanted to say this as, again, a straight call to action. We are in the process of building our team and, you know, bringing people onto the camp and truly networking as much as we can. So we want to put the word out there and say, if you know, like somebody who's, you know, ahead in a school or somebody who is in a head of some department, et cetera, if they have PDs for the teachers, personal development days, or if they have, you know, certain things going on for the kids, uh, athletic directors, et cetera, if you have those relationships, please get in contact with either of us, you know, you can leave a comment, you can send a message, et cetera, and we're going to build this out together, right? Yes, and there will be, there will be compensation for, you know, obviously yes, doing sir. so, but I think the greatest compensation is really getting in front of as many of our kids, getting in front of as many of our parents, as many of our people as we possibly can and making that change and that transformation that we're, you know, hopefully, hopefully doing so in this podcast as well. So anyway, any last words, coach? No, guys, just just believe. People say believe in yourself. The yeah. corniest statement it's, ever it's, said. But it's real. Uh, but it's real. But yeah. it comes down to not believing in yourself, like like vaguely, but understanding that that you are that acorn, mm. right? And all we have to do is figure out ways to nurture it and water it and and, and toil in the soil. Um, and being around people like me, Aquarius Wave, uh, the community we're creating. Uh, is going to help you figure out how to nurture the acorn inside of you so you can grow and become the best version of you. Absolutely. All right. Let's be great. What Let's you be say, great, y'all. What's it? What, what's it? What's it? He said every day. Every day. Get be- every day. Better. better. I say better. You say every day. Better. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Peace. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>